so today we are not in the boat because these Tuesday videos come out in real time, which means that we are currently in a hotel in Sao Miguel Island. And we are going to be talking about why the Azores? Yep. Why did we choose the Azores? Yeah, why the refit here? Why here in general? Really, what's interesting is before we started planning this trip, neither of us had ever heard of the Azores. <laughs> we had no idea they existed. The original plan was to try to get to the Caribbean. That was our end goal. Yeah, and since we don't go to Windward well, the plan was to go the most downwind route possible. So instead of trying to beat into the thorny path, which has that name for a reason, the plan was to head way east of the Caribbean and then come around and come back into it. And when I plotted it, like the safest, most guaranteed, we will never go upwind route, had us going very close to this little chain of islands called the Azores. And Maybe That's, we could stop in there. Yeah. So he mentioned the Azores, and of course the first thing I did was Google them. And what I saw was incredible. And it just, it looked like this small wonderland, this chain of islands where each island is totally different. They all have their own kind of cultural traditions, and it, it just, it looked too good to be true. It looked magical because it had this Portuguese culture mixed with this incredible natural wonder, and it has not let us down. <laughs> yeah, so the trip went from let's get to the Caribbean to let's get to the Azores. Mm -hmm. And the Azores are our new paradise. <laughs> we have loved it here. Now, the problem was we got to the Azores at the very last moment when it was okay to cross to Portugal mainland. So that was bittersweet because it gave us way more time in the Azores than we expected um, because we needed to wait for next year's wind. Apparently the, the time to go to Portugal is from April until the beginning of August. And she had a family, or we had a family reunion we had to get to in the middle of August. So there was no way we were gonna get back to the boat and make it to Portugal by the end of that window. So we decided, okay, yeah. we'll bide our time here. Right out the winter, and we'll go next year. Right, and instead of just sitting around, we decided to use that time to do some very important boat work that we had been putting off. Yeah, like it had been in the plans that these are some things in the boat that we wanted to change, but there'd never been a time that was good to change them. So the major refits that we did were the head and the galley. There were other things that we fixed, um, here and there, but the head in the galley got totally redone, and the reason we did that in the Azores was A, because we were there, <laughs> so yep. why not? We are kind of stuck there, and B, because it was so affordable. Yeah. Being on the hard in Angra is minuscule cost compared to being on the hard anywhere in the U.S. that we have seen. The other huge thing, so the Azores, the, part of the EU apparently is you can't live on your boat on the hard. Mm -hmm. uh, that's just the general thing. So once we get the mainland Portugal, we couldn't have done all these projects, or in the rest of Europe. But the Azores, they don't seem to care. Like it specifically says <laughs> in the, like the contract you sign to be on the hard, you're not going to live on it. You're not going to work on it. You can't paint. You can't do all these things that we've been doing. And when I was reading, I checked with the guy. I'm like, hey, wait, like we're hauling out specifically to do these <laughs> things. And he's like, oh yeah, just don't worry about it's it. It's fine. <laughs> yeah, they do not care yeah. here. So, so we've been able to live on the hard, work on the hard. And the other thing is that the materials we've needed have been actually surprisingly very accessible. So yeah. we were able to buy any new tools that we needed um, right up the street. It's just been easy, affordable, and I mean the woods that we've gotten, you could never get, you could never get Sapili mahogany for the price we got it. Yeah. <laughs> Um, it was just insanely cheap. So Yeah, and I, I grossly overestimated how much wood we were going to need for the galley. So from the wood for the galley, I also built the racks for the solar panels and an entire rack for the deck for storage, <laughs> plus other random pieces of wood that we need to make the boat just work. Because we had it. Yeah, so we had all this appeal left yeah. over. It was, it's 
so much wood. Um, and it's just a beautiful wood. So yeah. and hard, tough wood. So it's just it's been a blessing doing it in the Azores. Now we have talked about the extra taxes and stuff that and we've had the, to pay. The legal headaches. Mm -hmm. and, yeah. So like, it hasn't been all like cakewalk. Yeah. In the end, after all is said and done, we would do it again. Yeah. The same way, I think. There yeah. No, another thing, people have said, why be in the Azores doing the work? Why not just fly home, make money, and pay someone here to do it? So when we originally set up to, to get our boat repainted, that we were told to be about two weeks. It was he, just the top sides. Just the top sides. After he did the top sides, he was then going to do our deck and like all mm -hmm. this other stuff. And I did toy with the idea of having him do the interior work. The top sides, the two-week job, he started in early September and he finished in February. <laughs> it's two weeks. So it's, and that's it's, just it's very typical here. Yeah. Like and that's just how it is. Like if yeah, you want work done, I we've spoken to all the locals and everything, that's just how it is. And it's not just boat work, like yeah. it's housework, like you'll set up, you'll coordinate with contractors, yeah. they won't show up. Like it's yeah. just it's a whole it's a thing. thing. So you you just you know that. Mm -hmm. And so when it happens you deal with it and you're not surprised, but it's just better to do the work yourself. Yeah, the other <laughs> big thing, uh, I got told that the, the people that do boat work here, they're excellent at steel and fiberglass. Not aluminum and not wood. And I found this out firsthand when I asked for waterproof wood glue and they told me silicone <laughs> as the wood glue to glue the galley countertops together. So with that, we were like, okay, we'll do this yep. ourselves. Yeah, I understand they um, do not do woodworking here. And, you know, uh, that's just in Tercera. We don't know yeah, how it is in any the of the islands. other islands. So we can only speak for Tercera, which we will say, seeing São Miguel, seeing Ponte Delgada, um, we're really glad that we were in Tercera. Yeah. It might be a really small island, but Angra, the city, is just so accessible, safe. And friendly and friendly and like, cute and when you wonderful. walk around like the locals they say hello to you like everyone waves at yeah. everyone like it's it's so inviting Ponte and Delgada has been very very different and it's really opened our eyes like it's beautiful here too picturesque oh my gosh but it's a big city and with a big city comes your big city problems like the homeless and I heard people screaming from inside houses yeah, just, while walking um, through town yeah, and areas that we are walking in and we're like, oh, maybe we shouldn't be here. You yeah. Know? That just doesn't happen in Angra. <laughs> yeah, in Angra, anywhere you walk, it's it's wonderful. And, and safe. We've, we've been really happy with the Azores in no, that regard. No, San Miguel, like, yes, the whole big island, big island problems. It's beautiful here. <laughs> That's the thing I was getting to, yeah. Okay. <laughs> we've been really happy, but the, the best part has been the sightseeing, I mean. We'll, we'll never get tired of it. It's just absolutely gorgeous. And what's great is that we can take breaks from our work and travel to the other islands. And I wish so that we could have done that islands. more, but yeah. you know, we've, we've been so busy. So what started as completely unknown islands became the destination for our whole sailing trip. And then we came after, our home for a year. Yeah, and then our home. And after experiencing this, we we now want to continue into the med and really extend our trip. So we're super excited about that, but it's just crazy. These little islands that we didn't even know existed have become such an important part of our journey. Yeah. And we're so thankful for it. Thanks so much for watching. Be sure to like, subscribe, and share this video with your friends. And if you'd like to follow our journey in real time on a map, receive postcards from our ports of call and messages directly to the boat, you can go ahead and become a patron using the link in the description down below.